Hi, welcome back to Post TV. We're here with Juan Cabrera, who is from uh, SGO. They do the uh, Mystica product. And I've got Fred Ruckel, who is a compositor at Stitch in New York. And right now we're going to uh, hear a bit about the product. It's sort of, there's a lot of buzz about the product. And um, I know that you guys were established uh, for a while in Europe. And now you're, you're here in the U.S. And, and making a lot of headway. And I know a lot of people are very interested. It's sort of an all-in-one product. And, uh, and, and that's what I know is pretty exciting to a lot of people. So I was hoping you could describe just in detail what, what you guys offer. Sure. Hello there. Uh, the concept with Mystica is that, be, as you said, being an all-in-one system uh, allows you to do both from editing, compositing, grading, and stereo, right? It's not like the crowd is really competing with Final Cut or Avid, but it's, uh, people already have that system established. They're happy with their systems. They want to edit their stuff, either Final Cut, Avid, or anything they want, really. But Mystica can work with those products. You can conform from them and just work with the EDL or the uh, XMF or AAF as the, uh, the way you always want it. But having the editing tools at your disposal on a timeline, when you, can re when you really have to do dramatic changes close to a deadline, is a great asset. Same thing with compositing. I mean, sometimes you just have to fix a shot, you don't have time, you have your client on your side. And instead of going back to maybe a nuke station and waiting for the render and stuff, you can fix a lot of stuff in Mystica. We have pretty advanced compositing tools, 3D compositing tools, and uh, all those tools work together. You don't have like a compositing model or 3D model and you have to change from one side or the other. Everything works together in a beautiful way. So maybe you are doing an extreme color grading and you want to have some compositing on it. Maybe you are doing different layers or using one, one image to give you the actual color, the color selection for another image. You can do a lot of stuff. You can get really creative with the system. So, so you're not telling people they need to give up their existing products. They they can still work in their editing systems, but they do have the option to do some editing when, when they're working on yours. Exactly. I mean, Mystica is, is great at integration. I mean, it works great with Avid, it works great with Final Cut, and it's not intended um, to just go there and try to make people work in a different way. I mean, the whole the way it's, it's designed is to allow people to work on their way. Uh, the same way when they introduce uh, Mystica to Sky TV in London, they are actually broadcasting in 3D, full 3D channel, and you have 15,000 people working on 2D, working on their system, you are not going to change all that. You have to make a system that is actually capable of adapt, of work with them, work with their storage. Mystica doesn't have any proprietary hardware. All the hardware is off the shelf, high-end, but off the shelf. That means that if you're working with a company that they have already their own storage, they're 300 or 400 terabytes, they spend a lot of money on that, they want to work with that, they have all the pipeline work based on that. Mystica can work with that storage, it fits minimum speed stuff, you can actually work with that. And you have all the tools, from a grading system, from a stereo system, and everything working in real time. It's very fast, I mean Sky TV is putting out between one hour to two hours of 3D content every month. I mean we're not, okay. even even very difficult effects, like for example time warping, like actually creating new frames, it's real time in Mystica. We support most of the cameras, like uh, we support Ari Raw, we support Red One, we support Red Epic. We can, we can actually play Red Epic 5K without a Red Rocket. But you can have a Red Rocket if you want. The, the system supports it. That's the beautiful thing about it. It's so open that it can actually adapt to the way you work. Fred, as a compositor, how does how does something how does working this way appeal to you? It sounds like a lot of the tools that you guys have integrated and put into this software is very much like what was always known as the flame. And what kind of price point can people be looking at for a product such as Mystica? What kind of price point does Mystica come in at? I mean, the flame we know is a few hundred thousand. It has been the de facto machine that everyone has bought for the last. 10 years, it's taken the front row, and obviously everybody is developing tools like your own. Yours is actually one of the first ones that has all of the tools in one place and allows you to do things in real time. Even the flame doesn't allow real-time color correction. You have to sit on a frame and do it. You have to switch over to another program, Luster, in order to do real-time. So yours, your application allows you to do it in real-time, so you can be pressing play, having your clip looping and color correcting moving your sliders and all of that kind of stuff. You can adjust while it's playing. 
Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> You can actually correct when it's playing. I mean, you don't correct in real time. Uh, like, uh, you don't have your clip running in real time and correcting the color at the same time. You are close to real time at that time. But when you have done the color correction, the color correction with uh, power windows, with softs, with mask, with everything, you just hit play and place, right? Uh, also, when we're, when we're saying we support all the rest of the cameras, like Ari Raw, Cineform, SI2K, we have you have access to all that metadata. We're not creating any proxies. We're not creating any intermediate renders, and we're working in HDR floating point. That means that any change you may want, you're working. Imagine you're working with Red. You change the metadata, and you keep on color grading. You can still uh, just hit play and play with all those settings floating. Let me put it that way. Sorry. So it seems that it's it's all about the hardware the end user wants to buy to augment your software. Your software is obviously very capable. It's about what you buy. If I want to have a really great NVIDIA card or if I want to buy a lesser card, so, no? No, the thing with Mystica is not a software, it's a system. No, I said it's, of, it's not proprietary hardware, but it's a system integration. Exactly, because the thing is, if you have a system as great as Mystica, who is designed for real time, and you're not using the right hardware, you're not really getting the great, the great stuff Mystica can do for you. I mean, working on GPU, working on all that. I mean, the base, basic system right now is an HP Z800 with an NVIDIA FX 5800. Uh, they also work with a 6000, it's about to come out right now. DVS cards, like the panels, the control panels are tangent devices uh, panels. The cool thing about that is that the system is fully scalable. I mean, you don't have to buy, you can buy an HD system, a 2K system, 4K system. You can have a license, a different license for your render and your output. Imagine you are working in a facility that you don't have a projector, a 2K projector, a 4K projector. You have an HD reference monitor. You can actually have a system who has an HD output working up to 4K because maybe you're rendering to 4K DPXs or anything like that. You don't have any limit on the input resolution and you just, you can tailor made your license depending on what are your needs. The same with the storage. I mean, maybe you work with a 16 terabyte storage, maybe you need 64 storage, maybe you work with your own storage, with your own fiber optics storage. So you can, as the budget goes, you can really adapt the system to whatever you need. And answering your previous question, you asked about the price range. I mean, for that, it's more a commercial side. I'm, I'm more on the technical side. I, I focus on uh, working with the system and implementations. But I can tell you that it's cheaper than Flame and it's cheaper than Quanto. And it's got much more functionality. It's a very, very extremely com competitive system. I guess, um, so you're new here in, in the US. What about the user interface? What kind of, um, how long will it take someone to get up to speed using your system? The mm, let me put it this way. Uh, the way system Mystica works, the whole the way of having the timeline, but also having the snapshot and all that stuff. Um, once you learn how the timeline works, how do you work with the nodes and stuff, the rest you're used to work like that already. I mean, you have three wheels for color grading, you have five wheels, you have three vectors. You can see what you're doing. You are not just moving knobs and moving numbers like you don't know what you're doing. You have a familiar interface to interact with the program because each tool have their own little interface to get the best out of the tool and once you get used to how the timeline works how you can actually have a timeline have different layers in the timeline you can have three four different edits and just show the edits depending of what depending on what you're showing your client having your raw footage your color graded footage your uh, 3d footage 3d balance footage having all that in the timeline at the same time without changing projects just going hide show hide show play it's so fast. It's so fast. It makes the whole, it makes the work much more natural. So one of the things as of late with Autodesk is that they have a thing called Flare, which means if you buy the master license of a Flame, you can have a Flare for a very short, low, low cost. Like I think now it's only four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. That makes the big hit of buying a machine like a Flame much less of a burden because as a owner of a business you're thinking two flames is going to cost me 700 grand or i could have two of these so are you going to have a price point where if i buy the big gun i can have a substation for a lesser cost 
we already have that. We have different options of doing that. Um, because of why I explained before about the licenses, what output license, what render license you have, that changes the price dramatically. So you can have like a main station with 4K license, 4K output and all that stuff, and you put all your money on that. And then you can you can have assistance, which is the whole software. Maybe you don't, you can't render over certain resolution that you are working on the same timelines. You can create everything. You can do everything you do within regular software. The other limit, the only limitations are the render limitations that are the different licenses, and also you have a render nodes. Like for example, the way Park Road is working right now is Park One, Park Road in New Zealand. If I remember correctly, they have seven Mysticas right now, and they have a back of thirty render nodes because they are delivering around three hours, two to three hours of three D content every day. And they're using Mystica not just for the high-end 3D, but also for creating all the dailies, all the uh, all the different uh, all the different setups, pre uh, pre modifying the geometry all the way through the process. It's really integrated on their pipeline. I guess I have a, uh, my question is because you do so many things. What who who would be the artist that's running it? You know, are you are are you a colorist? Are you a compositor? What would be the main the main artist? On the system, depending on what you do, there you have people who are maybe more focused on the compositing, and they're great at compositing, and they just go there and do it. But I'd say because it's, it's a, the way I see Mystica is a is a finishing system. It's a system that everything ends up in Mystica, and you're delivering from Mystica. You can even render DCPs with Mystica to check your uh, to check your final thing on an actual projector. So I'd say it will be probably something more like a colorist or a stereographer actually working the system with. Of, with the more technical background in compositing, the more tools that are going to be there to help him out. But just with the color grading tool, I mean, with all the masks, floating windows, rot um, sorry, floating windows is 3D, uh, power windows, uh, trackers, animation, all that stuff. If you're a colorist and you just want to color grade, you can just do your stuff. You don't need to be a techie guy knowing compositing to use the color grading. You just want to color grade, you color grade. You're a colorist. We have a lot of people coming from Base Lake, coming from Da Vinci, who just started the system. They actually learned the color grading, the color grading tool, and they have other people assisting them on when they have to do some compositing or editing or whatever. They just focus on the coloring. So you, it's, it's tailor made again. Okay. Well, they're telling me we're running out of time. Is there anything else that any other questions that you have? Uh, I just, it sounds to me like the first real true head-to-head -head competition for Autodesk. So. It'll be interesting to see in this really difficult market to see two big machines who can win out because Autodesk's been predominant and you've got a lot of stuff in your package. So I'll be over at your booth shortly. Thank you very much, Juan. I appreciate you coming and, uh, and we'll be back shortly.